So welcome back to lesson 4.1, and we're going to talk about uh, textures, which are also images and, and sprites. Uh, and I'm going to explain what all that is. Um, the, the idea of this is that we're going to import a, a JPEG or a PNG file into uh, Unity, and then we're going to do things with it once it's in there. Um, to do that, I'm going to take you first of all to a website called textures.com, and there's many more like it, but just uh, just to show you this amazing resource that's available to you, um, you uh, you can buy credits for it. I see I've got 73 premium credits here. Um, I also have 15 free credits. Now, anyone that creates an account gets gets free credits every day to download some basic versions of, of materials. Um, so you might want to, to sign up and start collecting your own resource of uh, of materials, so I or textures. So I've I've got a library full of things that I've been buying over the years with different projects, um, and collecting ones that are free. Now, if you're really disciplined, and I don't do this, but you could log in every day and just just choose some and download them and use your daily allowance. Um, but just to give you an idea, like, there's a couple of things here. First of all, I want to show you anything that has this little S symbol on it. That S is the the logo for Substance. So in the last well, in the introduction, the last lesson, I was explaining what substances were. This is where you could buy a pre-made substance without needing to use the software to make something. And you can see how beautiful these are. So if I, if I click on this ornate iron panel, you can see what happens if you use it. And the clever thing about substances, is it comes with all of the maps already. But what you could also do, so I could download the, the source file, the actual substance file for 400 credits, which is really expensive. Um, There's a lot of detail in it, and that would have all the detail. You, you bring the substance file into Unity, and all of these maps will all be exposed inside Unity using the substance plugin. You could just download the compile, compiled material, which is 100 credits, which is all of the, the maps together. But what you can see here is what's actually constituted inside that substance. And now this is something you might want to start working with. You don't have to have substance to do this. This is this is how you build your textures. And you can build these inside your 3D program, or Photoshop can sometimes do these things for you. Uh, there's a whole complicated setup there in creating textures yourself. Um, but you can see there's different types of textures. There are albedos, which is your RGB information. That's your, your raw picture, the thing that you're actually going to see. Your height uh, is very similar to normal. They, I explain them both in the same way. They they give you the uh, the impression of uh, bump. So we use called bump maps. So if I've got let's find something sitting around. So I've got my calculator here, um, and there's there's texture here because these bumps, you know, on these buttons. Now I'm, I could just have one plain image that goes all the way across my calculator, and then the bump map would re reveal the relief. And all it's doing is actually calculating where the shadow would be um, in the in the image. So you don't have to build a complicated three D model especially if it's got uh, like bark, for instance, or, or concrete, where there's a lot of texture to it. Uh, you don't want to model all that. That's very expensive to have that many 3D polygons. But you put in the, the bump map. So height and normal sort of do that. Roughness will show um, specularity. So that's the amount of shininess that you get. Uh, it's sort of kind of the inverse of shininess, actually. It's kind of, it puts the, the roughness into, into a map. And then you've got metallic, which is the other way around, which puts shininess in. So it sort of provides specularity. And ambient occlusion is... Um, is natural shading. So in life, everything's got a shadow around it because there's ambient light all around us. And even if you have a spotlight on something, uh, and that's any light in the room, it will be bouncing around the room and create shadows around all the edges. So ambient occlusion is a is a map that has been generated by a 3D program that helps it understand where the where the edges are and, and just creates a little bit of a, a shadow in all those grooves, which makes it look more realistic. Now, if you're using a program like Substance Painter, it will create all these for you automatically. It's it's designed to you, you take your 3D model, you you paint it, you apply texture to it and roughness using brushes, and it's a really cool tool. Uh, it will automatically generate all these maps for you. Um, if you're working from scratch, you can do it in in Maya or 3D Max or Blender. Uh, there's ways of outputting the texture. Uh, ZBrush does it as well if you work with ZBrush, um, and you can do it a bit with Photoshop. I haven't actually done that myself, but I understand that it's possible to export these with Photoshop. But just so you understand all these different types of maps, because when we get into Unity and the material section, you need to understand this. So I'm going to use one of my free credits. I'm just going to download this one here. So I've got for free credits, I can either have a 512 by 512 or 1024 by 1024. And after that, if I want to get really large textures, they're premium, I'll have to start paying for them. So I'm going to download the 1024 by 1024. So I'm just going to click download. Oh, failed network error. Let's try again. There it is. And it's downloaded it as a TIFF. TIFF file. TIFFs are quite quite large. Um, they take quite a lot of space. So uh, 
to process in the in, in Unity. So let's come back out. Let's have a look at something else. Look something that's kind of fairly standard. Uh, let's let's have a look for flaws. I'm gonna try and find like a tileable brick. There we go. Medieval brick. What have we got here? This is quite nice with the grass. Let's click on this. You see now this hasn't got all the other maps. It doesn't have bump maps and you know, height maps and roughness maps, it's just an image, but it's been designed to be tiled, so it's square. So you've got four different versions of that same image, um, depending on how you're going to use it or what, how much grass you want in it. The square one's quite useful because it will tile nicely, so you can make a large floor out of it. So I'm going to use another one of my free credits. And you can see how much cheaper that is. It's only three credits to, to buy it um, for, for, to, for, to keep because it's not built in substance. It's not such a complicated image. So there's a couple of images. You see, that one's come down as a JPEG. Um, which is really helpful because that lets me demonstrate that. So let's jump into Unity. And I am going to open another window and uh, get my downloads. So I'm just not showing you this is on the other screen. Um, I'm going to drag that in. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my assets folder. Oh, uh, content, which I created earlier to store my details in. And I created a, a folder called materials and textures already. We did this when we we're creating a folder structure. So I'm going to go into textures. And this is why I'm going to save everything. Now, you could have subfolders. You could do it by scene. You could do it by, um, by the type of object. So you could say this is the textures for my person or my you know my my scenery or Act One, Scene One, or you know if, depending on how you want to structure it. I'm just going to dump it all in the textures folder for now because I'm not going to have that much. So I'm going to bring across my um, my TIFF that came across for the uh, sort of ornate wall, and I'm also going to bring across my JPEG. There we go. Now they're living in there. And if you click on them, you get a little thumbnail and you can sort of drag this up to have a look. So there you go. So there it is. And there's the other one. Um, and we can have a look at, you know, look at different colors on it. Let's see different pixels. Um, yeah. So you've got a sort of nice little view there. Now you notice when I click on it, it does give me information up here in the inspector. Now this is something that's really important to, to show you because we can import more information or maybe there's some information that's embedded inside it that we want to, 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 to bring in. So here, texture type is set to default, and there's other options you can apply here, depending on what you want it to be doing. Now, ignore everything here apart from default or sprite, and I'm going to explain that in a second. Um, you also got the default size, like the maximum size that it would actually run at. So along here, we've got all the different uh, modules that I've got installed into this version of Unity. So if I want to export it to, it, to, to desktop, um, or I can export it to Magic Leap or Android. So I can actually override my settings for Android to say this texture will never be more than 512 by 512. And if you remember, we downloaded it, it's 1024 by 1024, which is this. Now that's too much processing for an Android build when you can change the maximum size to 512 or even less to optimize it when it runs in engine. So that's quite a clever way of just making sure that all of your assets are, you know, depending on what you build them for, or what platform, that you've already started to build an optimization. Um, you know, I would recommend you never bring in uh, a really large file, 8,000 pixels wide. It's you just don't want to be doing that. You're never going to see it. Your your screen. I mean, I've got I've got this ridiculously wide screen. I think it's 4,000 pixels across. Um, so what am I going to do with an 8,000 pixel texture that's sitting as a small object in the screen? The screen is never going to see that much detail. You really want a a texture which uh, sort of matches the pixels of the screen, depending on where it's going to be seen. If it's going to be right in the distance. You might only be, you, know, you can actually calculate it, you might only ever see 50 pixels. So why does it need to be bigger than 50 pixels? Because the game engine's got to process that large image. So when you're creating your own textures, and you will do, and we'll probably cover this later in a bit more when we go into 3D modeling, if we go back to how you create your assets, you need to think about um, how you're cutting up your photos from your model box or from your, you know, your assets or your reference images so that you're not making them you know, full size <laughs> PSD files from Photoshop at 10,000 by 10,000. It just won't run in the game engine. You'll just slow everything down. So uh, I would recommend 1024 by 1024 for the majority of your images. Um, and you might even get away with 512 by 512. Uh, if you're going above that, I mean, there's reasons too, like a floor, if you've got an entire floor image that covers your, your you know, your, the artwork on the floor of, the, of your stage, that's quite a large space. And you might have one image that needs to spread across the entire stage, which you know, it could be 20 meters wide. And when you're zooming around inside the stage space, uh, you'll be getting really close to it. So that's where you might want a really high resolution um, image. And if you can't tile it because it's it's been painted, you know, if someone's done your artwork, which is the, the entire uh, space, then you'll want 
a much more um, uh, detailed pixel resolution. So that that's where you might use a 4K or an 8K texture map. Um, and that's fine to do it once or twice when you really need to. And we, we call that hero asset, hero because it's it's so close to the to the user. In game terms, that's usually the gun because you're standing holding the gun and that's what you're seeing all the time is the hero asset. Uh, but the majority of stuff, you want to try and keep the resolutions really small, particularly if you're building up a 3D model with lots of different textures. You know, might have a window that's 256 by 256. You might have a door that's 512 by 512 because you get close to it. Um, you might just create a, a black, grungy texture that's doing all of your masking and you, know, you make that really small because you just tile it everywhere. So that's the that's the size and that's just important to cover that off. Now what I'm also going to do in my textures folder, oh, yeah, so if I, because I've changed some stuff, it's asked me do I want to apply my settings that I've changed, I'm just going to say revert, just leave it as it was, so it hasn't changed anything. I'm also going to bring in um, some PNG files and these PNG files, they are my uh, my collection of logos, copper candle logos. So there we go. That's a PNG file. Um, I've had loads of these lovely things created. They, uh, I'm quite proud of my flame logo. So this is a sound version. I've got the theater version. I've got a VR version. So these are quite fun. Um, now the reason that logos are quite useful is that you might want to build them into the program. So you might want to build an application where the splash screen comes on when you first launch the program and you have a logo. Um, you might want to to have it in the corner of your user interface. Maybe it's always there like a watermark. So logos are quite useful. What's also quite useful is now I've, I've brought in a PNG, I can demonstrate something to you. So JPEGs like this guy here, uh, JPEGs can only store RGB information, red, green, blue, that's all they have. Um, TIFFs are much more clever. They 16-bit TIFFs and there's 32-bit TIFFs. They can store all sorts of information. You can actually have a TIFF that has all of your bump maps and normal maps built into it as as a as a file, so they're they're incredibly clever. Um, and you can also get your alpha channel. And if you've never seen an alpha channel, the best way to explain it is with a PNG. PNGs will store red, green, blue, and alpha. So let's have a look at this image here. I've got my red, I've got my green, I've got my blue, and there's my alpha. So an alpha is a mask. It comes in with the with the image. Now you can create this yourself um, in Photoshop. It's basically Anything that doesn't have data, so if you if you have black or white, that's that's information that will go into the RGB values. Um, but if you have absolutely nothing at all, which is this black area here, then that creates an alpha mask. Now what that means is that when I put this into my program, um, the white area can be transparent, which is really helpful. And you can see I've got white in the middle, which isn't part of the alpha. That's still going to be white, but the outside area, which is my border, will be transparent. But to do that, I have to do something first. I have to click up here, alpha source, input texture alpha. Now I could import a separate file with an alpha map, which is fine. But if you've got it embedded in the PNG, you want to click here, alpha is transparency, and apply that. And now it's disappeared. So now that is an, a transparent image, and that's really handy. Um, so if you're going to put that into a, a user interface, that's, that's good because it makes it nice and neat. Now the other thing I want to show you is this sprites things that I mentioned to you earlier. So if I, I'm going to change this to be a sprite, now you, you would always do this with logos, um, and it gives you a, a specification of how many pixels you want, and again, it's a bit like the resolution settings we're talking about before, how many pixels per unit, so I'm just going to leave that on its default, um, and you can edit it so you can move it around and do more work with it, but I'm just going to apply, apply it. Um, yeah, I don't think that matters. So now, my image there is now a sprite, not a, not a normal image. Now where that comes in handy is that if you are creating a user interface, let's go back to our UI, I'm gonna create an image there. Um, you see there it says the image that you want to apply to it says sprite, it needs to be a sprite. You can't just import a, a, you know, an RGB. So if I grab my guy here, it doesn't wanna take it, it won't go in. Uh, my logo, no, not having it, but my sprite, there it goes, you can see that. So for 2D images in a user interface, it needs to be a sprite. So you're going to have to get used to changing that. If you're wondering why you can't bring in a, an image, that'll be why. The other place it's useful, let's delete that, um, is in our project settings. And we haven't covered project settings yet, but we'll we'll get to that later. You might want to apply, so go to player. And in here, we can add our uh, logos, splash images. So Nikon, for instance, this is the icon that would appear in the... Um, 
Uh, when you, if you built your application out and you got a little symbol you click on to launch the application, it would live in here. Um, and you want to drag your sprite into that. There you go, and now I've got a sprite. The only thing is, is that they have to be at the right resolution. It actually says what the resolution is here. Uh, Unity can be quite clever and calculate it for you, but you may also want to, um, to pre-build them all in Photoshop to the right resolutions. It's a bit of a pain, but once you've done it once, you use it for all your projects. Um, splash image. This is when you launch Unity. So let's do a preview. This is what it's going to look like. There you go. So at the moment, it gives you a made of Unity. Now, if you're using the free version, that is all you get. Uh, that's how. That's one of their little tricks. Um, I pay for the professional version, so uh, except I'm not running it on this computer at the moment because I'm using it on another computer, so I can't tick that off. Um, we'll have to do that later. But we will. I'll demonstrate. It. But the idea is, you click on here, and then you can drag in a. Sprite, and now when I do a preview, I think in theory, there we go, it drags in my uh, my symbol along with the Unity logo. Um, or you can make it sequential, so they do them in order, so you've got Unity and then you've got your, your other Sprite. Um, yeah, that's really not, I hadn't realized I was running the free version on this computer. So uh, there we go, so that's, that's, that's why Sprites are important. You will need Sprites at some point. Um, so what do I do with them afterwards? Well, now we need to put them into a material. Uh, we can do that in the next lesson. Um, but the important thing here is that you understand that textures is just this. It's just the, the raw image and that you can do stuff to it once it's in here to change its resolution, to uh, turn it into a sprite. Um, but beyond that, it, it's not interacting with the game engine. It needs to go into a material to be used by anything now. So in the next lesson, we'll talk about that.